Farah Mehi is a consultant uh, for that particular sector, the education sector. Good morning, Mr. Farah Mehi. Thank you for joining us today on the program. Now, uh, the ministry, they're talking to stakeholders, giving them this July date such that uh, they will prepare to reopen, having spoken to some countries. They say they've spoken to about four countries on agreeing what to do with WAEC moving forward. So you've looked at this yourself. Do you think that uh, they've taken sufficient measures now to prepare and not put the students in harm's way upon resumption? Okay, uh, thank you for inviting me. It's a privilege and also appreciate uh, being here today. Um, I think one thing we need to first ask ourselves is what exactly is all of this about? Um, is the goal for our children to go and write an exam or to go and learn? Because I really don't understand where the balance of the argument is. The universities have been shut down. Our universities are not operating because of COVID. So if you are rushing students to go and write WAEC, those students are supposed to go to those universities that are shut down. So why are you rushing students to go to a school that is going to be shut down? And then we've had arguments around, oh, the school are there. The question we need to ask ourselves is that we know our health capacity. Do we need to deceive ourselves uh, that things are not bad? We know our health capacity. There are state government, for example, a couple of months that all COVID um, uh, people that are affected by COVID were kept in hospitals. But, for example, the Commissioner for Health in Lagos said that shouted a long time ago to say they didn't have capacity. And if the numbers kept growing at that number, they were going to have um, excess capacity. And they had to change strategy just because the number kept growing. How do you deal with growing number of cases? And that's when you now feel it's appropriate to take students to school. There are a couple of things we need to be very concerned about. So there's a lot of talk from school owners and school proprietors saying, our schools are ready. Question to ask is, those students are going to commute to school public sector analysis and solution finding is to look at the whole value chain. So assuming the school is safe, and we know the schools are not safe, we know those schools, in a normal situation, they are not safe. Assuming the schools were safe, right, how would that child get from his house to the school? It's something we need to also factor in. There are children that stay in Alagbole, Akute, and school in Ikeja. They take two bikes and take a bus to get to work. We just heard today about closure of a part of the Todd Milan Bridge. How will those children cope with that? How will the teachers commute to work and the people that support the school system? So it's not just about the schools are ready. It's about the whole value chain. And let me ask you a question. The private school owners are saying their schools are ready, but we know that the majority of our students are in the public schools. We know that for a fact. Based on data from WAEC, over 20,000 schools will be writing WAEC in Nigeria. 20,000 schools. If you do the maths, the number of people that have been involved in logistics, carrying scripts, um, supervision, invigilation, lab assistants, lecturers, teachers, chief invigilators that have been involved. I did a calculation and I saw that we're going to likely have an excess of between 501 million adults involved in that process in Nigeria, moving around, supervising schools. You know, sometimes the person that comes to supervise physics is not the person that comes to supervise geography, is not the person that comes to supervise home economics. So you're going to have teachers in a place like, the invigilators in a place like Lagos moving around and going around. Who has assured or looked at this, the, 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 the movement to be sure that they can do that safely? I think just analyzing this by saying my school or our schools are safe, it's, just doesn't talk about the whole picture. We are not ready. There is no point we're taking a risk to send children to schools that is just the right exam. I understand if it's to learn, but not just because of an exam, to go to universities that are locked up. Document put out by the Federal Ministry of Education. I don't know if you have seen that. Well, let me hope that you have seen the that document and probably even gone through the 52 pages. Are you saying that that document does not capture the entire value chain of education and consequently needs to be reviewed? <laughs> you know the point say about that document? The document says the schools should uh, do uh, get themselves prepared and do a self-assessment and send the result of the self-assessment to the Ministry of Education. Question. 
which school is doing those self-assessments? Is it the schools that we know? We know, we know our schools. We don't need to deceive ourselves. Is it the public schools that we know the capacity of the school in terms of, are they the ones going to do the self-assessment? We're going to be relying on opening on schools based on self-assessment of some people that already have vested interest on why the school should be opened. Um, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics came out with a report last week on what Nigerians are, how Nigerians are responding and handling to the COVID situation. And one of the findings was the fact that one of the areas where Nigerians struggled the most to be able to keep themselves, well, respect all the rules of social distancing in terms of regular washing of water of their hands and using soap to wash their hands. And the major reason that was given in that report, the report is available with the public, was because people could not afford soap. Those are parents with their children at home that could not afford soap. How do you now want to say a public school will be able to have that ready? So I've looked at those provisions. I've looked at the guidelines. They look safe. They look like it can take us to an extent. But, you know, the challenge is that most of those guidelines are similar to the ones you have seen in other countries. Now, in those other countries, those schools were safe. They are just making them safer for COVID. In our own situation, our public schools were not safe. We were in this country where children were abducted from schools. We were in this country when uh, the, the former Prime Minister of England set, started the initiative on safe school projects. Our schools are not safe before COVID. So using therapies that have made schools that were safe to become safer, we not help on safe school become safer. That's just a point. The gap is so wide. We have schools that don't have fences. So one of the things there is that, okay, these schools should start to think about having provision to be able to test students on a daily basis for their temperature. How do you test students every day for the temperature of a school that doesn't have a fence? When some students come from the south, some come from the north, some come from the east, and some come from the west, how do you check temperature every day? How do you ensure that there is adequate um, water supply in those schools? Finally, and this is also to the private school, because quite a number of the private schools are really talking a lot about the fact that they are ready and they are prepared. And the question to ask is, how do you know you are prepared? You, you, you did some things and you concluded. A single child can cause a problem for you. The bigger challenge is that, okay, so one school ahead, the school provider was saying that what they were going to do is that they're going to ensure that their children wear the face masks and they're also going to ensure they have the face shield. And I just asked a very simple question. I said, are there air conditioners in your school? He said, yes. I said, and you're sure that that is good for your children who are uh, asthmatic? Because in that okay. same class that you say you have an air conditioner, you have asthmatic children. Are they going to All right, be wearing we, we, shields and face masks? All right, we, we do thank you for those thoughts. So those are important considerations that we all need to take on board, the stakeholders inclusive, if we need to meet up with that deadline. <laughs>